Hello and welcome to My Model Corner Project 21. This model was selected randomly during our wildcard draw of viewers' choices at the end of the last video. Our subject is the AH-1Z Viper Attack Helicopter. The last helicopter I ever built was a Sikorsky Skycrane when I was about 10 years of age and it carried an Army Red Cross cargo container, presumably a portable clinic or an operating room. Let's open up the box and see what's offered within. Now that we've had our initial look, let's see what we can stir up with the large rotor blades and other parts within this kit. My particular approach on the construction, painting, and detailing will be much like we've done with the fixed wing aircraft as most of the techniques we've utilized in the past are readily transferable. We'll begin with the dual cockpits, but we don't have the usual ejection seats this time around. For our MFD screens, we can trim our decals and place them on the appropriate areas to provide more detailed displays within the cockpits. This kit contains photo etch replicating lap belts and shoulder harnesses. I've already painted them with an enamel gray primer which sticks to the brass surfaces better than acrylics. All we need to do is bend and use super glue to hold them in place.
Using an image of an actual engine, we can take a multi-layered approach to detailing and produce the look of heat stress on the metal surfaces. We can begin by dry brushing in some blue and red tints. Before we continue with that, let's add some piping and conduits. Adding some black oil paint wash at this stage adds to the look of shadows grime and brings out the molded detail. Painting some braided copper wire can provide additional scratch built detail to replicate cables or piping wrapped in colored Teflon spiral wrap that prevents chafing or wear. On to the engine compartments. We airbrush yellow green that looks much like the zinc chromate anti corrosion paint used on aircraft. While we're at it, we'll hit the nose avionics bays. For the main fuselage construction, we begin by adding the cockpits and then finish up on the engine bays and then affix the engines within their respective chambers. Now that all the internal parts have been attached, it's time to bond the main helicopter halves together. Although the body fit well together, the molding along the seam line came up a little short, so putty is called for. Coming up to the tail, the fit was also good, but similarly, the molding is a little bit short on the bottom seam line. More putty is required in this case. Next we mate the engine nozzle housings followed by the nozzle internal port structures. For the wing stubs, holes can be drilled to add weapon rails or racks depending on the loadout you choose. After adding the black shading to the main rotor blades, mask off the leading edges appropriately. The tops of the blades are gray with black leading edge strips, and the bottom of the blades are the opposite, black blades with gray leading edge strips.
The Viper has a number of grill vents that are available in fine photo etched detail as part of the kit. Just cut and carefully attach using the CA glue. The tail molded tongue and groove fit fine, but the mold came up short once again and we correct by using putty and sanding work. The kit contains this ball bearing presumably because the model will end up tail heavy. It fits snugly inside the turret. However, I added candle wax to secure it and add a tiny little bit of extra forward weight. We can contribute some additional detail and realism to the launchers by simply drilling out holes, creating launch tubes using a pin vise. First making a guide hole followed by a larger drill bit, a nozzle shaft can be made to our Hellfire missiles.
It's time to paint the main structure of the helicopter, so let's mask off to protect from overspray. At this point, we'll add some spaghetti patterns of flat white paint to enhance color variations with the main color coats later on. We have two kit suggested paint patterns for the exterior of our Viper. There's the standard gray two-tone or the four-color pattern of the Commander's Bird. Let's go with a slightly more difficult multicolor paint scheme. In my F-16 unit, we had a similar designated aircraft which had a special vertical tail flash design. We dubbed it the Wing King. After removing the preliminary tape, we add new masking to prepare for our second color. With the small size of the model, plus the shape we have to work with, touch-ups will be inevitable as each color is completed.
I later noted in images that the headrests are brown, so I quickly added in some paint. The lip of the intakes have a black trim. The sensor ray globe comes in two clear plastic halves. I first masked off the lenses and proceeded to black shade and then airbrush the gray. With the lenses re-exposed, we can add some color hues. I noted also in images that they are green tinted, while the slightly larger lens is blue tinted. The stowed off power position of the sphere is with the large lenses pointing upward. For display purposes, I may tilt them differently. Before we begin weathering, let's add our turret and our sphere. I brushed in some brown pastel to add some more accuracy to the look of the exposed engine. This is the application of a clear coat to protect our main paint scheme while it will also aid in weathering, particularly with the washes. After the protective coat has dried, the washes can be applied. This step will highlight panel lines, screws and rivets, and create shadows and crevices and other details. Just fill in any details and allow to dry a bit, then wipe off making sure not to be overly aggressive and remove the wash from the depressions. For our grunge detailing portion, we have this terrific copyrighted image by Jason Grant who has graciously given his permission for its use as a reference in this video. Jason has an incredible and extensive aviation photography portfolio on Flickr. If you love military aviation, check out his webpage which I posted a link to in the show more section of this video. As you can see, we have grime and soot in various areas of the aircraft. Using a black pastel powder and rubbing off on a sheet of white paper until we get the shade we desire we can produce a dirty and used look. We can also spread the powder around with a finger. If too much is applied, use a regular pencil eraser to tone down or remove the pastel. We've come to the decal stage of the build. Our gloss coat helps to reduce the silvering effect, but we can also cut off the outer borders of the carrier film. Some of the markings are multicolored. We just need to ensure that the changes in color line up with our paint patterns when applying these decals. Now, we add some weathering to our emblems to blend them in with the surroundings. It's time to start putting it all together. On the bottom, we'll add the Hellfire missiles, the launchers, and the skids. After we roll out 180 degrees, we'll add some antennas, panels, and the sidewinders. Coming up on the end. Let's finalize by adding the main rotor blades and gun barrels. We'll add the canopy glass after a light dull coat is added to the airframe. Take care, and we'll see you later.